All right, guys, you'll notice that I've set up a piecewise function over here. You'll look at g of x over on the left-hand screen. It says x plus 5, x minus 2 in absolute values, x minus 3 squared plus 1, and I typed it into Desmos. Uh, one thing that I do want you to remember as we do this is that you do need to type in these brackets around that domain restriction. All right, so as we are looking at doing the domain, because that is gonna be our goal is finding the domain, we need to remember that we will be identifying X values and we're gonna be looking for X values that create graph, that have graph above or below, okay? As we do that, um, we're gonna be identifying or where I like to start is saying, okay, well, let's go ahead and say we have negative infinity down here and positive infinity up here. It's good to keep in mind because sometimes the graph keeps going and going and going. Now, in this case, we're gonna be looking for the X value that has any kind of graph over it. And as we work out, you're gonna notice that red graph from left to right is just going and going and going. It does in fact not stop. Okay, so what that means is, as we write this domain, I'm gonna really pay attention to the fact that as we write this domain, I am gonna pay attention to the fact that as we are working our way in to approximately here, okay, it is going to be, there's going to be graph all over all above or below that, that x-axis. So we're gonna say simply that the domain runs from negative infinity all the way until we get to this value right here, which looks to be negative three. Now you may be asking yourself, why am I using a bracket there? So as we trace this graph, notice that when we trace it all the way up at negative three, there is an answer to that graph. And because there's an answer to it, I am going to use a, um, a bracket. Now, there is not a gap whatsoever in this because if you look at this value right here at negative three, there is an answer. And then when we trace up to this one, there is an undefined answer. However, although this is undefined, this value, which would normally be a parenthesis set, uh, because there is an answer here at negative three, it is saying that there is an X value available to fill in that hole. So our domain will continue. There's not going to be a separate domain. So we go from negative infinity till we get to negative three. And then once we get to negative three, it will actually continue until we get to right here. So now we could say, okay, well, let's go ahead and say we've got negative three until it continues all the way to the bottom. So let's go ahead and trace that down. And it continues and you'll notice it says undefined. That means there is no answer there, okay, at two. Okay, so I'm gonna put at two, there is no answer, okay? However, however, check it out. If I was to trace this graph up, guess what? It is undefined again, okay? So it is undefined again. And since it is undefined again in both of these places, this is gonna be considered a gap or the stop of our um, domain. So there's a gap at the value of two. So this is un unincluded, okay? And then we start back over at two, that is unincluded. Um, and we keep on working our way back out. And notice what happens to this graph. It just keeps going up. And it keeps going up and keeps going up and keeps going up until we get to this value of infinity. Now, we've just done a lot of work in trying to find the domain. So let's look at it one more time. We went from negative infinity all the way until we got to this value of negative three. That negative three at this location gave us an X value that would work. So we continued along. So this continues. 
Okay, that's going to continue. And we get to here, and then what we found was there was a gap at the bottom and a gap at the top. And that was gap was at a value of two. And then what we did was we just kept going and going and going until we got all the way to infinity. So because it continues through here, we can say that our actual domain goes from negative infinity through negative three, because that says it continued all the way until we got to two. And then there was a gap and two is our gap. So we pick it back up at two and we go to infinity. So we combined these two statements right there. Now we could also say we have negative infinity. The domain goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity except two. Two is the only thing because that was the answer that did not have a value on the x-axis that did not have any graph above or below it. 